Are you guys ready? Are you ready for action? Give me, do, do me a favor and smile to the person next to you. Just give him a little smile. You know, smiling is contagious. I just think it's a heaviness. I get you come with a machine set coat. I get you machine set you don't worship. But the joy of the Lord is our strength, hallelujah. I cling to that every day more than you can realize because the Lord knows with when things come in like a flood, I need a smile on my face. Amen. There's power in that smile of yours. Don't you forget it. I'm excited this morning to, to share a breakthrough with you. Amen. Are you ready for that? I'm excited to share a breakthrough with you this morning. Um, we've, been, we've been journeying through the book of Joshua. Those of you guys who have been here and those of you guys, if you want, we'll get you up to speed really quickly. But walls are coming down today. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Walls are coming down today. I believe in the worship. You know, there was a moment there where I could sense God was tearing down strongholds. God was tearing down walls. We believe that God is still able. What Elmer said now, we still believe. That was a message we had a few weeks ago. We still believe. You know, there's power and there's an anointing on a people in this day and age who still stand on the word of God. He says, every promise, every word that you have spoken, I believe 100% wholeheartedly. And that's what Alan was saying. Alan was saying, it's, it's, I never say, you need to have faith to, to I never say, well, me, if, you, if you weren't healed, your faith wasn't strong enough. That wouldn't be right of me. But I ask you, do you believe? Do you believe? If you believe, you will be healed. Hallelujah. So that's when we pray for people. Do you believe in Jesus? When they confess, I believe, there's power to heal. Hallelujah. There's power to deliver. And just like Alma said now, when she believed the word of God, because there's healing in the word of God, there's breakthrough in the word of God, healing takes place, breakthrough takes place. So I'm asking you this morning, do you believe? Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you believe? Yes. Praise God. Strongholds are coming down this morning in the name of Jesus because we choose to believe hallelujah so we spent some time in Joshua chapter 1 chapter 2 and we are now in Joshua chapter 6 but if you turn to Joshua chapter 1 there's some promises that the Lord speaks over Joshua's life that I want to remind you of I want to just put it under your feet before we journey onto the walls so the word says, verse 1 of chapter 1 of Joshua, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is now dead. Now then, you and all these people, say, get ready. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land which I am about to give you. Hallelujah. I am about to give you territory, says the Lord. This morning, you better believe it. I'm about to give you territory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I will give you, this is important, you need to burn this in your heart. I will give you every place where you set, Ellen was talking about feet this morning, prophetically she's talking about her foot. The Lord wanted her foot not to move any further than what it did, but the Lord healed her because every place you place your foot, I will give you. You need to be able to move in the season, hallelujah. You are useless in the season if you are stuck in one place. So if you are stuck, God wants to heal you. God wants to set you free because you need to be able to move about in the season. Because every place you place your foot, God is about to give you. Not for your sake, but for his kingdom's sake. Hallelujah. Every place you place your foot, I will give you as I promised to, Mo to Moses. Your territory will extend, says the Lord. Verse 5 is another promise you need to, to burn in your heart. If you can understand this, you are secure in your identity. No one will be able to stand against you. Hallelujah. No one will be able to come against you. All the days of your life. This is powerful. If you can understand this, that no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. That's powerful, man. That's not on a good day and that's not on a bad day. That doesn't mean today God feels like giving me the breakthrough. Today you will be for me. No, it says for all the days of your life I am with you. You need to believe it. You need to understand it. Find your identity, not in yourself, in your own strength. Find your identity on the confession of Christ. Hallelujah. No one will stand against you as long as you live, says the Lord. What a promise. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And then verse 6 is the last part of the promises we want to touch on. Be strong 
and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land which I swore to their ancestors. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. Vicky, I don't know if you're listening this morning. If Vicky is on the online stream, the word of the Lord saying, be strong and courageous because you will lead the people to inherit the land. Amen. She will understand what that means this morning. So, verse 2, chapter 2, if you will. Let's read what it says in chapter 2. So the Lord gave the word to Joshua that you will inherit the land after Moses, right? Now Joshua 2. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies. Say two spies. To Shittim. Go and look over the land, he said, especially go look at Jericho. Go look at the fortified cities. So they went and entered the land. And they went into the house of a prostitute named Rahab. I want you to pay attention to the story right here. So the two spies went into the very territory that God was about to give them. Hallelujah. Two of them went in. They found an open door. God is speaking open doors to you. Hallelujah. Even in your enemy's household, you will have open doors. Hallelujah. Let me turn down this volume just a second, guys, before we start screaming at one another here. So... So I'll make a little bit more. Um, even in your enemy's household, you will see open doors. In the territory of the enemy, I will create an open door for you to infiltrate the land. I will give you a strategy in the enemy's territory of how to overtake that place, says the Lord. Hallelujah. So two spies went in ahead of the people. They were representing God's people. Amen. They went in, they entered the house of the prostitute named Rahab. And the king of Jericho was told, was told about this. That two men have come here to spy out the land. Does this remind you of another story in the Bible of Moses and the twelve spies? We will touch on that now, that there was two now, then there was twelve. Then, Jericho was, then the king of Jericho told, there are some Israelites here to spy out the land. And so the king of Jericho sent the message to Rahab. I don't know how he knew, maybe it would word that they were there. But bring out the men who came to you and entered your house because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman took these two men and said to them, yes, or said to these men, yes, the men came to me, but I do not know where they came from. At dusk, when it was close to the time, with, at dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left here. Turn with me to verse 8. Before the spies lay down for the night, Rahab went up to the rooftop, because they were hidden on the roof. And she said this to them. Hear this. I want you to hear this testimony. We had a testimony this morning. She said to them, I know that the Lord God has given this land to you. Hallelujah. This is from the enemy. She said to the two men of God, I know that this territory has been given to you. And a great fear has fallen on us. The mighty city of Jericho was in fear because of the rumors of God's goodness that they heard. Hallelujah. So all who lived in this country, they are now melting. The, melton, the mountains will melt like wax. They are melting in fear because of you. We have heard of how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea when you came out of Egypt. And what he did to Shion and Og. The two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear. And everyone's courage, what did the word say to the Lord, to Joshua? Be strong and courageous. This word, woman says here, everyone's courage left them. Because it was given to you. All the courage left our army. All the courage left our walls. All of the courage left our cities. Because we heard of the goodness of God. Praise God. The courage failed us, for the Lord your God is in heaven above and on the earth as below. Here on earth as it is in heaven, my Father. And then the story goes on and says, please save my family, because I've, I've, I've kept you here safely and hidden you away, and we know the scarlet robe gets thrown out. But in Numbers 13, if you read in Numbers 13, you get the story of Moses who sends out the 12 spies into the land of Canaan. Amen. Same land. 
and they sent the, twel the 12 spies out. In fact, they crossed the Red Sea. They were going directly into the land of Canaan. They were leaving Egypt and going directly into the promised land. And the word says that the Lord said to Moses, Moses, pick 12 men, one from each tribe. Let them go into the land for 40 days and inspect. Is the land good? Is it plentiful? Are there cities fortified? What does the people look like in the territory? The word of the Lord says these 12 men went into the territory flowing with milk and honey. Say milk and honey with me. God is giving us a land of milk and honey. He sent the 12 men into the milk, into the, into the milk and honey. Let's do this. <laughs> into the land of Canaan. They, in, they looked through the land. They saw, my goodness, this place is beautiful. It's fruitful. The ground bear much fruit. The word says they had a, a cluster of grapes on their shoulders that two men had to carry. That's how weighty the, 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 the produce of the land was. And after 40 days, they came back and came to give a report to Moses and the people and said, the land does flow with milk and honey. Be careful of your report, says the Lord. Be careful what you speak with your mouth. Your negative comments, your negative words can send a fear through the people that will cause them not to enter the promised land. Make sure that what you speak is prophetic. Make sure that what you speak is God's words and not your own words. Hallelujah. What do we carry in our mouth carries life and death. It is important that we speak life over the things of God. So they were bringing back this report. The Lord had already said to Moses, I'm giving you the land. But they came back and said, the land flows with milk and honey. But, careful of but. But there are giants. There are giants in the land. The sons of Anak, they live there. They are mighty. We look like grasshoppers in the sight of these mighty men. That was the report they brought about the land that God wanted to give them. If God wants to give you a land, my friends, He will give it to you. I can tell you testimonies upon testimonies of how the Lord gave us a land. In fact, we are sitting in a land. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We are standing on holy ground, not by our own doing, but because the Lord wanted to give us the territory. Hallelujah. We had other plans for ourselves move from house to house we know we will go from here to there and the lord said i've got great things in mind for you my people be obedient be led by the holy spirit and you move into the promised land where was i the giants were in the land they brought back the negative report god wanted to give them the promised land and they said we don't want it we are afraid of the giants we are afraid of the giants so so i, I care more about my life than what I care about the promise of God. I know you said we were meant to take that land. I know you said there's a breakthrough coming, but I'm too afraid to step into it right now. I, in fact, the, the fear, the word says that, I think it's chapter 15, that says, that chapter 14, where it says, the people wept. The people wept because they were so afraid of what was coming. You should have smiled and said, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the breakthrough. Because I'm about to eat honey and milk. But they start crying. And the Lord said to them, there was only two men, Joshua and Caleb said, let us go. If God said he's for us, if his promises are true, let us go and take the land. But the tent sent fear through the camp. And the Lord said, because you have not believed my word, because you have not trusted what I've said, you will wander this desert now. For 40 years because you would not take the blessing you would not take the blessing people if we cannot take the blessing and receive the blessing of god what else do you want then you wander the desert like a i don't know like what but for 40 years you wonder that a generation passes away because you would not take what god intended i refuse to let this generation's blessing go by because I was not willing to do what God has called me to do. I pray that that is in your heart the same way. Father, we cannot see another generation pass by when the enemy has come in like a flood and we say we are too afraid to take a stand. We must see his kingdom come on earth. Amen? So Joshua chapter 2 says Rahab allowed them in. Chapter 3 we spoke about last week. They moved through the, the Jordan and they put up, there's the wall. For those of you who weren't here, I hope that you will put your hands on the wall. Uh, you want your, your plaque is off your reserve. 
Sabrina Guru. The wall speaks of God's goodness. The wall speaks about a crossing over. The wall speaks about a new season in our lives. Amen. It is a memorial stone of God's goodness. It's a testimony of what God has brought us through. So Joshua 3 and 4, we speak about that. Joshua chapter 5, if you read chapter 5 with me, verse 1, I'm almost through again. I'm just getting to the current spot. Now when the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast had heard of how the Lord had drawn, dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, their hearts melted. They had, again, it says, they no longer had courage to face the Israelites. And then the word says, Gilgal, we'll preach, that we'll speak a message on Gilgal, powerful message about how the Lord circumcised his people. Those who had come out of the wilderness experience had been recommitted to God. And then in the end of that chapter, the word says, verse 13, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn out sword in his hand. Joshua went up and asked him, are you for us or against us? And he said, neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals, because the place where you are standing is holy. And then, verse 6, where we are now, are you ready, everybody? Are you ready? I need you to, to, to you need to start Warming, you see how I'm dressed this morning, bro. I'm dressed in my, in my white, white jackies and a comfortable shirt because we are about to move. Amen. We are about to move. So when the gates of Jericho were securely barred, can I just say that before we hit the Joshua Tree, just remind us about Elmer's story. Do you guys remember the, the zebra crossing that we spoke about last week, the zebra crossing? So I, I said we will, this is the zebra crossing, and I, I was driving my car, and this lady was running across, and I had to stop. And the Lord said to me, the same way you had to stop because of the lady going over the zebra crossing is the same way in which when you confess with your mouth the name of Jesus, I create a blood-stained way for you to move through and pass through. The enemy cannot come near you because you are walking through on the blood of the Lamb when you confess. It's powerful that in, in, in healing as well. And then the Lord took me to Revelation 12, verse 11, where it says, you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb, right? And the word of your testimony. And I, I, I pondered on that, and the Lord said to me, do you understand what we spoke about in the zebra crossing when you move through on the bloodstained way? So when you are moving through on the bloodstained way, and you take a minute to say, Father, I thank you for the goodness that you have bestowed to me. I thank you that you have carried me through, that I'm now standing on solid ground, that I'm standing on the blood of the Lamb. Your testimony reflects back to God the goodness. You reflect back the goodness of God on the blood stained way. When those two things are in, in, in conjunction, when they are together, the blood stained way in confession and your testimony, nothing can stand against you. Nothing can come against you. The power of your testimony in that position sends fear into the enemy. This is what we're seeing in, Jer in Jericho here. Jericho heard of the goodness of God. So what am I saying to you? I want to encourage you to speak your testimony in the season. Don't keep silent of what God has done for you. Do you know what it does? When I speak my testimony, some people may say, yeah, when he says his testimony, he says, he's so wonderful, and look how the Lord took him out of that place, and now he's standing here. He's such a wonderful guy. No, when I'm speaking my testimony, I'm telling you of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. His goodness is running after me. And when I say, Father, you have taken me, I was sick, and he healed me, I'm saying, I give you the glory. Hallelujah. It's not about me. My testimony is about him. Amen. So Joshua's testimony sends fear into Jericho. Jericho had lost the battle before they even stepped onto the battlefield. Praise God. And that is what the Lord is saying to you. Before you even have to go to the fight, you will already have the victory. Amen. Now the gates of Jericho, verse 1, were securely barred. Nobody was allowed in or out because of the Israelites. They were so afraid, they closed the gates and said, nobody, go in or out. Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, can you see? Can you see, says the Lord. I have delivered that city into your hands along with its king and its mighty army. It is yours. Praise God. The land which I promised Moses, you are about 
to see it. Hallelujah. That which you have trusted for for 40 years, where you stood at the door and you looked and said you will not enter, that season is here and now. Hallelujah. You are about to enter. I've given it into your hands. So the instruction comes. There is the instruction. We spoke a lot about instruction, bro. Touched on drinking the water. Elnor spoke about further instruction for Gideon and his men. The instruction came. And sometimes the Lord will give you some crazy instructions. Amen. But when it seems, when it seems unusual, just do it. Do me a favor. Just do it because God is going to give you a mighty victory. March around the city once. Marty is here. Okay. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Can you stand up with me? I want you just to stretch your limbs with me. I want you to move out the chairs, out the way, get ready. We're about to move here in prophetic fashion. Yes, yes. There's, there's a word of the Lord. <laughs> I have no idea what you're going to talk about today. And while we were worshiping, um, there is those of us who sort of live on this on this farm kind of know there's a lot of stuff happening here that is definitely not of the Lord. Yes. And uh, Ruth and I have been talking about it a lot and praying about it, and I'm sure everyone else has too. While we were worshiping, the Lord said to me, a Jericho march. Mm. And I had no idea what you were going to talk about. <laughs> and in fact, he even gave me a path, a path to walk out, outside of this building, along there and around that boundary. It's part of the way we ride, but it's not a very long walk. But he said to me, walk along there and along there. Wow. If whoever wants to go, let's wow. go. Wow, wow, wow. So I just want to, I just yeah, felt I'm burning. I had to share that with oh. you because I had no idea what you were going to talk about today. Praise God, praise God. <laughs> I'm going to see a victory, hallelujah. Do you want to say something? Are you all right? All right, all right. We are going to see a victory, all right? I want to encourage you, um, how long is the journey? <laughs> Can we up? Okay. For those of you who are willing, afterwards we're going to do that walk, amen? But we're going to do a demonstration, Brahma. I don't know if you can get the cameras on the people. Uh, turn this way. Can you move the chairs out the way? We want to move the chairs out the way. We are going to do a prophetic action this morning. Anne-Marie has confirmed... The action. We want to we want to be prophetic this morning. So the word of the Lord said to Joshua, march around the city once with all its armed men. Do this for six days. So we're warming up, right? We are conditioning ourselves. We are about to start moving around this wall for six days. There's some instructions here. Have seven priests carry the trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. This is what we're going to do this morning. March around it seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the, oh, the whole army, which is you and me, give a loud shout in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then... The walls will come tumbling down. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So we're going to do this this morning, Marty. Let's be able uh, as far instructions. We're going to have some order here to this, to this march. I want Marty, uh, can we have the prayer uh, guys, the prayer warriors to be uh, in front here? So let's have them right here. I want Marty right behind them. We're going to be moving around the left. The center of the, of the place will be over there. So Marty, net after hello. All right, then we need, uh, we need a representation of uh, Elno, me and you will go in here behind uh, Marty with Brahm and Wilmy, and then the rest of us will follow suit right behind them. All right, Marty, every time Marty crosses, every time Marty crosses the, this place here, all right, I want Marty to give us one blow, to represent one round. Okay? <laughs> On the seventh time, Marty, when you hit the seventh round, and we will scream in the name of Jesus for the walls that are coming down. Are you excited? Yeah. I'm expectant. I'm excited in the name of Jesus. Let's go. Let's go. A <laughs> good You got to get a bounce in your step.
you, Jesus. We receive the victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we receive. We receive the victory. We thank you, Lord, that for so many years we have waited for this moment. Father, we don't take this action lightly. We don't take this declaration lightly. But you have confirmed your word, Father. We receive it now. We receive the victory. I speak courage and strength over your people. That they will enter into the land that you have called them to be, Father. That you will send them out, Father. That they will infiltrate the territories that you have called us for in the name of Jesus. May they be like sharp arrows, Father, being released by your hand, O God. May they meet the target which you have called them for in the name of Jesus. Thank you for equipping us for this season, O oh God. Thank you that we can hear the walls tumbling down, Father. Thank you for the freedom that we can sense in your spirit, O oh God. I pray, Father, that the shout that we give will resound and echo through the hills. That it will echo through this nation. That it will echo through this country, Father, and through the rest of the world. Let the shout of praise be heard in the name of Jesus. May the walls come tumbling down, Father. We declare this place holy ground in the name of Jesus. And all the glory and all the honor will be to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We give you the victory, for you deserve it. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this word in season. We thank you for your people, for this prophetic declaration. We receive it, we receive it, we receive it. We still believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Sure. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. For those of you guys who don't know, this evening we've got a wall coming down, praise and worship evening to, to just usher in the victory that God has given us. If you are available, please do join us. For those of you guys who are watching online, if you are in the area, please come and join us. We've got a, we've we've received the victory. We're going to just move through the land now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're at five o'clock. Five o'clock this evening. Thank you, everyone.